G'day everyone, welcome back to Sully's Rods and Customs. Um, what we're up to today is we're going to um, start the engine pre-assembly. Um, one of the things one of the things I'll show you today is um, installing your piston rings. Now this one's obviously this one's right, I've got them all marked. These come out quite dark and grimy. You can still see a little bit of the grime around it. I just used them in my degreaser tank over the back there. Um, and I just let them sit in there for five or ten minutes. Got a plastic scrubbing brush and scrubbed them up and you can see these things come out really nice. The, I'll show you how good they actually look. That's, um, you can see the grooves in these things. Hardly got, hardly got anywhere. No damage to the top. It says there that they're 20 thou over um, piston rings. I bought some new ones that are actually 20 thou over. Um, I've got them down here. I've already, I've already assembled all the rest of them. They've all got their um, new rings on them. I've got these last, last couple to go here. So um, I guess first thing you gotta do is take off the rings. I mean, if you're taking off these old ones, and you're not too worried about it because you're going to chuck them away. You can actually hop it back, put your thumb in the gap here, and open this thing up. And you can see I can leave that off there. But all you do is end up scratching your scratching your piston. So what these are? They're a pair of um, they're just a cheap pair of eBay um, piston ring pliers. You can see in the end here they have like a bit of a taper groove there. When you open them up, they they just pull the ring. So I just sort of slide them in there underneath the ring like that open it up and you can see the taper sort of grabs the ring and I can open it up and it goes on and off really easy no damage to the, to the piston at all um, so I've got them down here there's the pile um, I'll explain position of rings as I'm installing the, um, the new ones so there's the, the second one coming off I just missed it there's a second one coming off. So I've kept them all together there. Um, this bottom, so the top ones, um, this, this engine had pretty much zero wear. The, the rings were in excellent condition, the bores were excellent condition. You can see on these top ones, they, um, they're just a square, or what do you call them, like a square-faced um, ring. No particular shape to them. But the new, the new top one, the new top ones have a, the internal part is tapered and actually marked with the word top on them. So when you go to install them, I'm not sure if you can actually see that, but um, where is it? It's written right, right there near my thumb. That's what it shows up on the camera there, but it does say top. So you just got to make sure you position them correctly, um, right way up and correctly spaced. The bottom, the bottom rings here are um, ball separator ring. They're quite, they're quite easy to take off. They're really flexible, so you can get that off really easy with no damage to your piston. Bottom one's the same. It's the um, oil rings again. So you can actually hold it out off your piston. You just work it around. Oops, don't get that other space in there. I don't need them again, so I'm not too worried about them. And then it has this kind of a, I don't know what you call it, but like a labyrinth, labyrinth sort of. Um, spacer and what that does is it keeps these two ends you've got to make sure that down. you've got to make sure that when you put these put these together that these two ends they just butt up against each other exactly like that if you get this over the top like that that bit that's sticking out there where you see it's a little bit sticking out right there that will scratch the absolute crap out of your ball um, and also it won't keep the ring at the correct the other two oil rings at the correct spacing and you'll get a lot of oil pump up underneath your underneath your second ring. Um, so yeah, uh, once I take it off, I just nothing's very dirty on this engine. I give it a bit of a bit of a clean. It's a little bit dark in there, but it's not. There's no grime built up in there. I just give it a bit of a clean, bit of a wipe over. Um, these new these new rings, you can see, so you don't make the mistake. See these little coloured blocks on it? These little coloured blocks, when you when you install them on the side of your piston, they've got to look like that. So when you see one assembled, um, when you see one assembled here on a piston, 
see how you can see the two little little red and the green block in there and I'm guessing once this thing heats up it just burns them little plastic bits out of there but um, that's how you know you've installed it correctly with this this type of ring uh, put that back over there um, what I'll do is I'll I'll bring the video in close and I'll show you at close range um, how this process goes all right so I've just got to make sure I can you can see what I'm doing here so there's that that same piston again so you get this um, this oil ring spacer and you just wind it around you just need to make sure that um, these two ends are butted up there on this particular set of rings it talks about that that joint being directly above the gudgeon pin or your wrist pin whatever you want to call it um, a lot of a lot of um, piston ring sets don't call for that they, they call for them to be sort of around the side here and they want your one oil ring here and one oil ring sort of around the back sort of I guess it's quite, kind of like doing a, a, a triangle shape you know you don't want them exactly over the top of each other so I'll get this now um, if you don't have a, a proper table for setting up your um, setting up your pistons in a proper a proper holder you can just do what I'm doing here you just feed it around nice and carefully I always hold this end here so it doesn't pop the spacer ring out and you can see it just it's gradually going in there um, I just hold this pull it out and over the top and drop it in there um, I just seen that little red block fall out so I just got to be mindful that those two ends are still butted together which I can see they are and put the top oil ring in same again I'll try and hold it here where you can see it I'll line up that ring with the bottom there and I'll feed it around just once I get it in the groove that is one second pop, pop that in the groove there and hold it in there so it doesn't come out like it did last time and again just feed the feed the ring around until you get near the end here and then grab the end of the ring and just sort of lift it out the, the piston ring um, pliers don't work on that little um, don't work on that little skinny ring any skinny ring so you can see there's the block there the other red one was in that gap there and I can see we'll still see the ends butted together so right now my my spacer joint is there I have my top ring now at a 45 from it I have my bottom ring now so they're kind of spaced oil ring spaces there and the butt joint right there so that's how I like it um, again everyone has their particular way um, this one here is the is the um, second ring or the you can't call them a scraper ring it kind of scrapes the oil away too so you can see I'm not sure if you can actually see it um, it says it says get my hand behind so you can see it see how it says top just near my finger right there so you gotta make sure you hold it the right way got your pliers here put it in the end of it open it up don't open it too far just hold it above the piston and just open it enough to get it down into that second groove all right there it is in the second groove and then number one again the top one it says top right there up, make sure there's no dirt and crap on it. Um, I install the rings dry, and then when I'm finished, before I just before I install them in the engine, um, I put a bit of um, a bit of transmission fluid on ATF, whatever you want to call it. So, spacing wise, now we have the, the oil ring spacer there. We have the groove of one oil ring around there, groove run one oil ring around there. And I like to have the, the bottom ring and the top ring 180 degrees from each other. So there's my, there's my top ring right there. My bottom ring groove is opposite. So I have a groove here, a groove there, a groove there. Then I have a compression ring groove there and my second ring back over there. So in the engine, these things can actually move around slightly when they're in there and they can actually line up. It won't do any issues as long as your, your clearance is correct. So 
on the subject of ring gap and ring clearance I'll, um, I'll show you how you check I'll pull this top ring out and I'll show you how to check the um, correct um, ring gap um, in your in your cylinder in your engine so there's piston number eight got new rings on it I'll, um, I'll position the camera and I'll get it over near the ball there and we'll, um, we'll check the we'll check the ring gap in the cylinder top rings um, I'll put it in the bore here I'll show you what's gonna happen I put it in the bore I grab the I grab a piston I um, hold it in the bore square it up in the bore and I push that ring down probably till about halfway down that gudgeon gudgeon pin or wrist pin so you sort of mid stroke there got the other one down in here this is the new one in this side so I've squared them up in the bore and oh, you can see the gap right there that's the gap the ring gap between both ends of the ring as it comes around so when I measure this side here which I just did before I got the camera on there I can get in that gap there 10 13 19 21 33 thou I can get in that gap there and in this side here on the brand new one I get 12 14 I get 16 thou in this side so as a rule of thumb you want you want to have about four thou per inch of bore if you're talking imperial which you generally do for, for piston rings of older engines and piston size and bore sizes so this engine is at Holden 253 so its standard bore size is 3.625 3 inches and 625 thou plus 20 thou over so you can see on the top of the don't know if you can see there's a little bit of marks on it but a um, bit of the old oil stain on it. it says there that it is plus 0 0.20 so it's plus 20 thou so that means this bore size is 3.645 so 3 inches 645 thou so if I have 4 thou per um, per inch of bore I should have about 14 maybe 14 16 thou and this one here coming at exactly 16 thou so all I did to this engine was I, I the top I put a straight edge on this thing it was flat as already I just scraped off the old gasket off the top of it um, the balls here I just quickly went through it with a with a hone just to get you can see that one just to get the crisscross pattern um, you need for the rings to bed themselves in so this bore size is still perfect so you can see this old ring has had a fair bit of wear on it and hardly anything hardly anything in the bore there was no lip in the top of it or anything you just see a black line where the actual top of the piston come up and stop so when it comes up the top dead center the top of this piston is flush with the top of this um, the deck here and that distance between the top of the piston and that top compression ring is that difference between the top of here and that that black line you can see there which is where the compression stroke ends for that ring so it's in excellent condition um, I'm happy with that I'm going to reassemble this um, this piston now with these with this top ring um, just to show you something again, um, I just got to find the, the word top on it again. So, where is it? Come on, fucking, there it is. See how, see how you can see the word top on that one, which I mentioned before. On other brands of rings, they have, well, this is the original one here, you can see it has a dot. You can see the dot there, the dot's the, the, dot's the top. So, if you don't watch what you're doing, you can get the rings in upside down. You get the rings in upside down, you'll have all manner of strife. Um, you'll have poor compression, or you can assemble the oil rings incorrectly. You'll have um, you'll have poor um, poor oil usage. You'll end up burning excessive oil, or you'll starve the cylinder of oil, and then piston will run too hot because the aluminium expands a lot, and it will season your bore. Probably break a land off your piston ring or something off your off your piston so just one more time when I put the ring in the bore I just pop it in the top like that 
use your piston with no no ring in it square it up with the top push it down in there okay we finally have the new seal I um, like I told you the gasket that I bought had the graphite rope type seal in there which is incorrect um, this is fairly early model HQ so it has this um, rubber or neoprene seal um, I think the original one was like a black rubber this this version is grey which kind of tells me it's probably probably a, um, a neoprene of some sort but anyway so the trick to this is make sure that, that gap in the back which seals on that little that ring there I've already cleaned that ring make sure this gap is free of free from oil on the back here if you don't want to get oil in there you could spin the actual seal just use a clean rag like I'm doing here now give it a wipe now the seal has the seal has a lip on it this lip here faces into the engine so you want you know it stops the oil from going out so if you grab this seal and you pop it down into into the groove here you push it down with your thumb you've got to try and make sure they're equal distance I can feel it's, it's just proud of the um that camera, it's just proud of the of the face here on both sides equal distance then you get the bearing cap I already cleaned the back of this one and make sure if you think about it if the bearings go on the front the bearing goes towards the engine that way the lips got to go this way so it faces into into the engine and then push it down in tight and you should feel that it's just proud again right so it needs to push in and compress so it gets tight in that back face against that against that back edge um, and it seals in there nice and tight now you don't you don't lubricate the front of this top edge of this seal here you just leave it leave it dry but when you install this bearing cap because it's just a metal on metal face here you have to put a bit of a smear of um, I don't know what have I got here, a bit of ultra grey gasket maker, a bit of a smear on the block just around near the seal and around the face there. You don't want oil travelling. This is this is an external passage out to the outside of the engine. So a lot of people get oil leaks, they think it's a rear main seal, but they haven't put any sealant on this actual face here, which is um a bit of a bit of a silly thing to do. Anyway, um so right now I'll just move the caps out of the way and we'll um lubricate the bearings again now that the, the plastic gauge part's all done and we know the clearance is correct just get this out of the way put it over there put the caps out they're numbered so they've got to go in a certain position one to five got a bit of um engine assembly lube here um i just squeeze a bit on this face here I don't know how to do it but I do that and I also put a bit of um bit of engine oil on there there we go um you also got to get a little bit just behind this one there is a thrust face on this rear bearing and the um and the crank so the crank can't travel back and forth you've got to put a little bit on that face there so just give it a bit of a bit of a smear around make sure you've got good coverage um this this engine assembly lube really hangs around for a long time it's really sticky shit you can see it here on my hands um i also put a bit on the crank journals um just give me a sec i'll lube them up and i'll bring in and drop it in there Right, I have the, have the crank here. Just pick it up, be careful you don't damage any bearings. Um, that rear main seal, it has the, um, has the, um, has a bit of oil on it. Um, right, next job is to lube up these, lube up these 
bearing caps here. Put them on one at a time. Might zoom out a bit for that so you can see what's actually happening here. So again, just a smear inside the bearing there. You don't want to overdo it. Again, on this rear one, a bit on the thrust faces. And just make sure that you can see that lip on the bottom one matches the lip on the top one. And you can put it on the bottom down there or put up the pull one one. That's not RTV. And a bit of the grey engine um, silicon. Not too much. Just a bit around there. A bit around there, most of it will get squeezed out anyway. Take away from the edge of the bearing there. Take the cap, drop it down on top there, give your bolts and threads a bit of a you have a loop under the head, a bit on the thread. So that's number five. I'm looking for number four now. What I'm talking about here is um, on these bearing caps. You can see on top of it here. This one says this one says four. So five, four, three, two, one. So this is. Number four, they also have a, they also have an arrow on them. See how it's got like a little arrow on the front of it here. So arrow's got a front, face the front of your engine. You put a bit of assembly lube in here too. Like I said, there's plenty on the crank already. Get that and get it down there nice and carefully. Oops. Make sure you get a bit of, bit of lube under the on the bolts. All right, let's keep going with this. So now we got main cap number three. Oops, gotta do the bolts too. Make sure the arrow is facing the front. Main cap number two. Actually, wonder what. Um, Assembly lube I'm using is camshaft, camshaft, handwrite camshaft, and engine assembly lube. I just put a bit of a line of it down the side of the thread. I put a bit of a dot under the head so when it hits this friction faces up the top here, you don't have too much friction um, stopping you from getting the torque setting. It'll torque up to the right setting. You really want a sticky sort of stuff like this so that when that engine fires for the first time it um, it retains all its assembly lube until it gets oil pressure up there. Um, now oil pressure means a fair bit of strife. Means the end of your um, engine assembly project anyway. Alright, let's just Leave it down there out of the way for now. Get that out of the way. And, I don't know, try and use it. And I'll get my um, torque wrench and I'll start torquing these up. Okay, so I'm just going to nip these up 
probably start the middle one here. I just nip them up to just on a pretty low torque setting. This impact driver. I just sort of put them down till it um, stops. So I give this a bit of a hit that way, back that way. Back that way. So then I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check the clearance of the bearing and the actual um, and it's like a slinger ring on the on the back of the back of the crank. This is a metric set. I'll just grab a, an imperial set that I had a set here yesterday, but I don't. Let me just stop there and I'll go find it. Okay, so let's measure that again. in a little bit easy that's two thou it's gonna be between two and six thou there's three five oh, don't go in so that's four thou end float there which is what it needs so that's um that's pretty good just gonna make sure that your um crank spins nice and freely you can see that's just like one finger turning that around it's got a lot of a lot of glue on it a lot of glue, a lot of um, lube on it. So now I'm going to torque those, torque those bolts down. So first, first part for me supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be 70 foot pounds. Let me just check the the Bible over here. If I'm right, where's the page that tells me that? Yeah, head bolts, main bearings, two five three three eight seventy pounds feet. Weight pounds, so I'll just go through first and um, I'll just give it this with about um, I think it's about 30, 30 foot pounds there. Still spins nice and easily. That's what you want to see. Now I'll bring it up to the 70 foot pounds that it's supposed to be. Go through, double check them all, make sure I didn't miss any. Remember, always use 
Easy main cap, main bearing bolts. Crank still turns nice and easy. Um, if you feel any tightness in it, um, don't proceed. Um, an old, an old engine builder's trick would be to take number one cap off, stick a bit of paper in the um, in the main cap. Just get a bit more lever on these where I haven't got it. A bit of paper under the main cap, and if it stops, if it stops the engine from spinning around, you're pretty much just taking the clearance out of it, and you know it's not not too sloppy. All right. So that's that. So main caps in. What I like to do now is just clean the head of these bolts, and um, I like to put like a bit of a paint marker on. I don't actually have an actual paint mark, like a paint mark. So I'm just going to get a bit of paint and um, just dot it on the end of it there, just so I remember that they're done. Getting old, um, so is the memory. And I forget what I've done and what I haven't done. So I'll go and grab some paint and I'll mark them up. Right, we're back. Um, I've mentioned that we're going to install the pistons. Uh, we're going to install them in the order of one, three, five, seven. Um, I'll just explain a bit more about that. If you look at the engine from the top, this front bit, you can kind of see it tapers off forward here to the the closest piston to the front is number one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we need one, three, five, one, three, five, seven on this side. So we might forward the bag over again. Get this pin in here. Um, what we've got here is a piston ring compressor. This one here, you just sort of pop a little clip and it opens up. It has a little um, what do you call it? A little square drive thing for tightening up the, the clamp and compressing the, the rings. Um, like I showed you before in this piston, you can see that green and red little block there. That way I know that the oil ring separator has not doubled over itself. Pretty simple process. And I have separated the oil ring groove bottom ones around the back here and the other ones opposite side there. And I have the compression ring here near this land and I have the, um, the scraper ring or the second ring next to this land. So they're all opposing, so it's a good compression. Um, on this piston ring compressor, you, you can kind of see that it has, um, has these little bumps in it here. So these bumps stop the piston ring compressor going through the hole in your bore. So you put your piston in this way Grab the, there's lots of different ones. You can get the ones that are just a pressing cone type one, which is, um, I guess, more like a high end piston ring compressor. This one, oops, it's a little bit out of whack. Just try and keep these ends lined up. Compress it up, tighten it up, that's it there. Um, sorry, one thing, we've got to do first. Just a little bit of oil, a little bit of engine oil on, on the rings. Not a lot, just a little bit, just to stop them from biting into the, the cylinder wall. So I just have some basic grade um, Valvoline oil here. I'll just um, tip a little bit of it into this cap. So as I go along, I don't have to keep sticking my finger in the, in the bottle. There's a bottle in there somewhere. Uh, once you get a bit on the end of my finger, I just sort of dab it around the rings a bit, give it a bit of a turn, make sure they're still in their spot. One ring's, one ring's there, one ring's over there. All good. Make sure the ring compressor's facing the right direction. Tighten the clamp. Hope that's not too loud on the Microphone for Like I mentioned, you can buy a, a tapered type ring compressor that is specific to your piston or bore size. This is multi-fit, obviously. 
Um, the, the cap is off this at the moment and you can see what I do here. I just, I just put a um, couple of bits of rubber hose on here. Last thing you want to do is scratch your bore. So, look at your piston. Has a little notch in it for the front. I blacked it in with the texture just to make sure I didn't make a mistake. And then you slide it in. You don't have to worry about it touching the bore because you've got the rubber, the rubber on it. Line up the um, piston in the bore. Get it into your rubber mallet. Get a bit of a Of a tap in there. There we go. Oven hosed. Put those bits of hose there. The, the bearing cap and the and the nuts out. Don't forget to put a bit of lube in your bearing there too. Like I said before, I I put it on the um, I put it on the cylinder on the um, crank. I put it on the crank journal as well as putting it on the bearing. That way you can't you can't forget. Um, get these nuts on this one first. I might just grab a little small impact just to zip those up just loosely, just to zip them up. Give me two secs. So these get torqued up to 35 foot pounds. I just gotta find where I put the torque wrench. It's got the socket on the end of it. Where did I put it down? Let me find it. Still haven't found the torque wrench, but um, I just grabbed a, another another socket. It's nice and loose like that, just a light zip up. Right, all the pistons and conrods are in. Time to torque it up. So these conrod bolts go 35 foot pounds. I just sort of half take them up a bit on both sides. Then I go for the final flick. Just um, good to have a ratchet type um, torque wrench. Yeah, shit to have one a year got to take off every time. Just keep rolling this over till you get all the ones that you need. One. This is the one I was playing around with earlier, just to see what the torque was of torque range was of my torque wrench. Lift these up, like I said, halfway first. I mean, 35 foot pounds is the lowest this torque wrench goes to. So it'll go up to, oh, I don't know, maybe 200 foot pounds. Got a good range on it. It's a Norbar brand. 
Got it at a garage sale one day ago. Sold things for 50 bucks. Apparently he closed down his mechanical business. I didn't ask any questions. I got it for a really good price. I didn't I didn't haggle with him. I just took the 50 buck offer. He stayed straight at me. Had a lot of other tools there, a lot of really old ones I weren't interested in, but um, it's good to get a good size torque wrench. It has a good range from the low side to the high side. I can do head bolts of this, or I can do these con rod bolts. And I'll just go over the whole lot again and just double check them all, make sure I haven't missed any. those new rings dragging around on the cylinder walls there. A bit like that till they fed in properly. There we go, they're all looking pretty good. I'll do the same as I did before. Clean up the end of the nuts. Put a bit of marking paint on them just to show that they've been done. There you go, that's, that's all of the all of the talking process done in this bottom end now. It's um it's time to time to get the um, oil pick up on and the sump on and roll this baby over. Um, I'll just get that paint happening there so I can do it before I flip it over. Paint on there. Get on the end of the brush. Those, those ones done. Get the next lot down, we'll turn it over again. Where's the where's that here? Stronger. Nice lot. Move on the front end. Turn it around now until I get the next two sets up. Turn the end of the heads a bit. Um, I meant to buy a paint marker pen when I, um, when I was at the shop today, but I um, forgot all about it, which is why I'm using this paintbrush. So yeah, that's the bottom end in, rotating nice and freely. That's, um, that's pretty much it. What I'll do now is I'll, um, we're going to find the oil pick up, make sure it's clean, bolt it on there, get the sump on, get that connected up, and I can flip this baby over. Actually, I'll probably put the wash plugs in too, so I might make that a separate video. I've probably got an hour and a half of this one already, so, um, righto. If you, again, just, like I always say, if you enjoy watching what I do, if you find it informative, um, hit the like button, share it with your mates. Um, don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I've got this engine build happening. I've got all my chassis components coming back soon. I've got to put a service kit through that transmission. Then I'm going to start replacing the floor and cut the panel off the side of this Monaro. I'm trying to fix all these bits here. They're really hard to get into. So um, it'll pay to be a subscriber. So keep watching. Thanks for watching.